Chin and Jetty, longtime SoCan member, uh, incredible producer, involved in all kinds of recordings. I just wanted to ask, to start off, uh, what have you been doing during the pandemic? How have you been keeping busy and doing things? I've been creating, lots of creating. When people ask me how to get over their depression, how to get over whatever they're going through, no matter what medium you're in, even if you're not an, a, a, a creative, I just tell people to create. It really helps, man. It's therapeutic, but it also it, it's... Um, as a, as a musician, you can feel yourself getting better. I'm a better keyboard player. I'm a better bass player. I'm a better, I'm a better version of, ever, of myself because all I'm doing is creating. That doesn't mean that I'm writing good music all the time. It just means I'm creating. And I don't, I'm one of those people that don't believe in writer's block. So I just feel like you have good days and you have bad days. And, right. and, and during the pandemic, I've had a lot of them, but I'm grateful for it. All of it. In fact, in 2020, you released a, a whole string of singles uh, for the love of life, falling, serious, let go. Yeah. It almost seems like you're busier than ever. I am. You know, actually, that happened in 2021, right? But I am busier than ever because I'm making myself a priority. You know, like I, I spend all my days producing other artists. And right now I'm producing really amazing artists, right? And then and some of them I see in person, some of them I don't. And I can't believe some of the people I get to work with. For sure. But, but in, within that space, I get to work on my own, uh, on myself. So that's what pandemic has been for me so far. Uh, one great thing that happened during COVID is a record uh, that I produced is nominated for Best Traditional R&B Record. Cool. What, what record is that? It's, it's an artist called I Am The Living. And he's this English artist that moved to Vancouver to work with me. And we made a record all on our own and it got nominated, so. You've achieved uh, incredible success as a producer. I mean, your work with Eminem includes tracks on the Grammy winning 2010 album, Recovery. Another album you worked on picked up a Grammy as well. That's Gravity by Christian hip hop artist Lecrae. Yeah. You've placed tracks with Dr. Dre, 50 Cent Clips with featuring Kanye West and early on with Drake, worked with Bruno Mars, Pink, Pitbull, Aloe Black. How did you reach those heights? How did you get there? I mean, he's going to hate me for saying this, but well, Mike and Michael McCarthy, Michael McCarthy is such a mentor to me. Right. And when I was with EMI, he really taught me the art of collaboration and getting together with people and putting myself out there and getting to the good songs and the bad songs to get to the good songs, you know, and all yeah. that eventually helped me with my networking. And I'm really active musically. Like I love even now, you know, as old as I am, I still like listening to new music as much as the classics. I like to know what resonates with people. So I started, uh, Michael started sending me to Los Angeles and New York and he would just keep me there for a month or sometimes months at a time. And I would just network. And eventually I met my production partner. Eventually I met Dr. Dre. I'm eventually, you know, like things just fell into place. I don't know. I, I wish I had a better story than that, but it's literally, that's what happened. When you're uh, making beats, are you actually in the room with these sort of legendary characters like Eminem and, and some of them Dr. I am, some of them are, some of them I am, some of them I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I mean, because I, I know the usual way for beat making is you cook up the beat, submit it, and then you find out later whether the artist has used it or not. But and I'm sure you do your share of that too. Yeah, you do, but you know, I kind of prime myself on this one thing. I work with things that I like and the things that resonate with me and. Like, even by today's standards, like, I'm not trying to get onto every trap record or I'm not trying to do the latest of who's who. I'm just more interested in working with great artists. Like, right now, I'm working with this incredible uh, girl named Zeta who lives in Whistler, this Ethiopian artist. Like, the story's great. The music's great. I'm working with another woman named Tiana Esperanza, um, whose mom, I mean, no, whose grandmother was Palm Olive from the Slits, that 70s punk band. Whoa. And, and, and we're making something that's kind of like, I don't know, it's today's, it's like Joan Baez, uh, Tracy Chapman, and Amy Winehouse all wrapped it into one. You know what I mean? Like I just work like working with those kind of artists that, that want to be a little left of the center. I'm good at that. What, yeah. what, are you, uh, what are you working on next? What's next? I am working right now. I'm working with that artist, Tiana Esperanza. Right. I'm, I'm actually making a producer's record for myself. Oh, okay. Cool. So I'm, an, I'm calling on all my favorite artists over the years, Canadian and, and not Canadian, to uh, be vessels for some songs I wrote. 
And I was so grateful because I got that JSR grant, you know, from uh, um, Factor. And I'm, I'm so, I can't believe that at this point in my life that I got it. And I'm, 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 I'm feverishly working away on that because it's exciting. And I haven't done that for myself ever, 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 you know, so. Sounds great. Yeah, I'm excited. Can't man. wait to hear it. <laughs>